that's been a huge part of my journey as a music therapist. Uh, so eventually my journey brought me to the continent of, of Africa. And in 2014, I founded a nonprofit called Umoja Global Community Music Therapy. And it started out as, and still is mainly an investigative organization that interacts with and collaborates with pre-existing uh, community music therapy practices. Uh, we venture into communities and programs in mainly East Africa, uh, where the practitioners are community musicians, community leaders, teachers, and like-minded people. And they work intuitively and they utilize the music traditions that are uh, culturally intrinsic and relevant and, and, and part of the history and the people's stories. Uh, we personally believe that these intuitive pre-existing practices inform our own practices as certified music therapists. Uh, and I believe that it's very important for these practices to all be recognized as music therapy. They should all be recognized as one field, one, one uh, purposeful way of, of being and engaging in music. Uh, community music therapy, I would say, is my uh, approach of choice. And the definition of community music therapy, Karen, you already did a wonderful job with sort of framing it. Uh, it's sometimes a bit hard to explain, but if I could put it in a nutshell, I would say it's taking music therapy sessions outside of closed doors and into the community setting. It's interacting with groups, uh, whole communities uh, in the middle of the town square, uh, in performance venues, in schools and community centers. And it's, it's uh, reminding people and participants that their community is a psychosocial resource. It is a resource for health and wellness. And by strengthening communities, you strengthen health and you make health more accessible. Uh, and uh, it's also just a ton of fun because the music is uh, usually traditional music uh, or folk music that is most relevant and recognized by the community. It's mostly groups, group sessions. Uh, and at times you uh, are uh, singing, uh, dancing. Uh, you may not necessarily have access to certain instruments, um, but you utilize what is there. You utilize the space, you utilize the energy that you have available to you. And that's what a community music therapy setting uh, is like. I'd love to share a song with you uh, that I wrote um, from my time in South Africa. Uh, to give some background info, I'm currently studying a master's degree at University of Pretoria in South Africa. Uh, what drew me to this program was it is the only accredited music therapy program on the African continent. And so naturally, it has an emphasis on community music therapy approaches, anti-oppressive practices, and music therapy uh, approaches that address uh, systemic issues, uh, social justice goals, and the like. And so, of course, that's what drew me to this program. During my uh, time in South Africa, I was working with, in a community center for adults with intellectual disabilities. And I wrote this folk song. It's a Christian song, uh, naturally, just because my clients at the time were mainly Christian, and I wanted to bring something forward to them that, uh, that resonated with them in their belief systems. Uh, of course, this song it mentions God, uh, and it can be adapted to mention any, any God, any higher being that you believe in. Uh, it can be adapted for, for any belief system. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Christian God. Um, but here's how it goes. Uh, I'll play it for you once. and. I encourage you to sing along. <laughs> we are all God's children in this space. We are all 
God's children in this space. I will come to the table. I will bring what I'm able. We are all God's children in this space. One more time. We are all God's children in this space. We are all God's children in this space. I will come to the table. I will bring what I'm able, we are all God's children in this space. And during the session, I would ask, what would you like to bring to the table today? Bringing something to the table doesn't necessarily have to mean um, it's something positive. Sometimes it's challenges, sometimes it's pain and, and th things you're experiencing in your life. Uh, sometimes it is positive things. Uh, it's bringing what you are able. So it is strengths based. Uh, so a lot of the time I get, let's say, love and kindness. So then you change the words to, um, we will bring love and kindness to this space. We will bring love and kindness to this space. We will come, we will come to the table. We will bring what we're able. We will bring love and kindness to this space. <laughs> That's just an example of uh, some of the music I use in my sessions. And my, uh, my work as a music therapist and my work with Umoja is tied deeply to, to the practice of cultural humility. Uh, and Karen, you also did a wonderful job at, at defining this as well. Um, cultural humility, I would say, is not only such an important way of practicing uh, in music therapy or in any field, but it can also be a guide for how we occupy spaces in our everyday, even in our own homes with our own families. If I could uh, put it into words, uh, cultural humility is when you walk into a space that you probably don't belong in. Uh, perhaps you are working with a community in, in which you are not a member. And it's about entering into the space with objective openness and your interactions with community members are completely authentic and gentle and you are approaching each interactive from curiosity a curiosity to listen and to learn and to engage in the doings of the community members that you are with and it doesn't come from a place of wanting to teach or to correct or to look at the space through the prism of your own experience or the prism of your own knowledge. And music, the music therapy field, at times it has tears. It has tears of education and tears of training. And at times, as practitioners, it can narrow our view of what is, what is music therapy and what is not, and what is clinical and what is not. And I find that working from a, a culturally humble space allows our work and our approach to be open and flexible and multifaceted. Uh, and then that allows us to connect with more people. It brings, it makes music therapy more accessible, more palatable and, and, and reachable. Uh, to, to people. And as I've said before, at times these pre-existing music therapy practices and these pre-existing uh, timeless beliefs about music and its healing properties, uh, that's been around before music therapy became a field. And I believe that 